Welcome to Insights from Cumberland County College. My name is Kevin McGarvey. Our guest today was born in Chicago, fell in love with the theater at a very young age, attended Appalachian State University in North Carolina, and came to Cumberland County College in 2005 and serves as our director of the theater department. Her name is Deborah Bradshaw, and Debbie, we are absolutely delighted to have you with us. Today. Well, thank you, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. You have changed Cumberland County College. You have changed the whole atmosphere around here. One of the things that we try to do on Insights is to present to the public some people that are doing positive things for the community. We, I don't think they get enough attention. You have done as much for this community as anyone has. You have completely lighted up Cumberland County. You've changed the atmosphere on campus. And I don't know if people are even aware of the theater program that we have here at the college. It's tremendous, and you are responsible for it. Well, thank you, Kevin. Nice. How did it all start? Tell us about your background. Tell us uh, about when you were a little kid and acting. Oh, and okay. Um, I guess one of my first memories is performing at uh, Colonial Williamsburg. Uh, they have the Yuletide ceremony every Christmas. And my dad worked at, for Colonial Williamsburg as manager, food manager of the lodge. So I, one of my first memories is standing by that fire and burn bright oh log I don't I don't even remember the rest but and my were, dad loves to tell me I'm uh, probably out four yeah right that's quite a memory. and then I, I took dance from six six years old on all through uh, high school college and voice lessons and our family moved to Charlotte North Carolina which is how I got to Appalachian State University which is part of the University of North Carolina. That's a great place. That's in Boone, right? It's beautiful. Part of the state. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And one of my first jobs was for uh, performing for Horn in the West, which is an outdoor drama. There, the story of Daniel Boone. But it's really a, it's a wonderful, wonderful experience. When did you know that you were going to be an actress? Um, probably by the eighth grade, I was absolutely positive, and in my mind. I, I knew that I wanted to go to New York and, and be on Broadway. My mother is from New York. She mm -hmm. went to Hartwick College and Columbia University. Mm -hmm. And she loved old movie musicals. I was named after Debbie Reynolds, who uh, I actually know. Uh -huh. And uh, my best friend, well, one of our best friends, has been her conductor for 27 years now. How so exciting. It's very exciting. So um, that, that got me started, and I, I've always loved it. So eighth grade, that means you're about 14 or so. You're 14 right. years old, and you knew that you were going to be an actress. You knew that I that knew. was your life. Right. I you sang were in front for of the mirror, everything. You sang, you danced. You but with the hairbrush, my brother can tell you all kinds of great stories. But mm -hmm. yes, and I performed for everything at our school and um, went on to be an opera major at Appalachian and then did my first musical my senior year. Uh, I loved it. Musicals. You sent me your... Uh, your resume a couple of weeks ago, and I want to just throw some names out here for okay. uh, for you and for our viewers. Debbie has either acted in or directed Les Miserables, Phantom of the Opera, The Music Man, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, Oliver, Carousel, a funny thing happened on the way to the Forum, Mame, uh, Camelot, mm -hmm. the list is... It goes on and on. It goes yes. on and on and on. Uh, the Music Man. I was seven years old, I think, when The Music Man came out. I can remember Shirley Jones, right? Oh, Shirley Jones. As Marion, Jones. the librarian, and Robert Preston, and little Opie singing the Wells oh. Fargo wagon as they're coming around the... And nobody can do it like they could. Uh -huh. I loved them. I fell in love with them. Yes. So you were in The Music Man. I did. I've done several productions of The Music Man. Actually, one at the Walnut Street Theater. So if you go to the second floor of the Walnut Street Theater and look to your right, uh -huh. uh, you'll see my picture there because they have everyone who's ever performed at Walnut uh -huh. on the wall. But I, I do. I love Music Man. We'll, yeah. we'll do it at some point here. That would be great. I can only imagine that. How about, uh, let me just throw some titles out at you. Sure. Give me some, some thumbnails. Uh, Les Mis. Les Mis uh, was absolutely wonderful. I did the, uh, my audition for Les Mis, I was nine months pregnant, and I went in and sang Lover Man, oh, Where Can You Be? And I got a big laugh from that. Um, obviously, I couldn't do the Broadway production right then, but they called me six months later and cast me in the First National Company, and I moved my family to Boston, and we spent couple of years on the road with Les Mis. You told me that. You spent two years on the road. You were in right. a touring company right. f of Les Mis, meaning that you're in Boston for two nights. S and six months. We were in the original 
first national company. Mm -hmm. So it was six months Boston, six months at the Kennedy Center, oh, six months Philly at the Forest Theater, I and see. then in Chicago, the Auditorium Theater. Six months at a time. So how do you right. live when you do that? Do you find a hotel downtown to stay in? Um, well, you know, you're provided a per diem. There's a company manager. They give you ideas. However, um, it's my nature to want to uh, orchestrate things. So I would find apartments for all the families on the road. And we had several families and we would move everything there. And we had spouses who took care of all the kids at night. And it was really incredible. I we think had it sounds a, great. It was great. I do. I think it, it sounds great. great. Two years on the road, six and, months in mm -hmm. Boston, six months in Philly, mm -hmm. six months in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Lay Miz every night for two and a half hours. Three and a half. Three and a half. Well, three hours and 20 minutes to be exact, yes. <laughs> That's about the limits of human it, endurance, isn't it? Three hours and 20 minutes. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have classes here that are three hours and 20 minutes, and the clock is behind the students. I can see the clock, and they can. And I think by the three hour mark, they're, they're, they're ready. Kind of squirming. Right, they're ready to go. And when you do two of those a day on Wednesdays and Saturdays, then it's a big day. Two a day? Two a day. How do you do that? Um, I think one of the things is that, and it's something that I try to impart here, is your own professional philosophy. People have paid to see you perform. You have a responsibility to give them everything that you possibly can. I mean, obviously, there are going to be days where you just don't feel like it. But So you have the butterflies in your stomach before the first Always. play of the day. Right. You go out. You give it all. Right. Heart, soul, the whole thing for three hours and 20 minutes. Right. Go back, take a breather. Mm -hmm. and a quick much, breather. A quick breather. Mm -hmm. And then go out and do it all over again. That's right. And by mm -hmm. the end of the night? By the end of the night, you can barely drive home or you're really, really tired. There's nothing left. There's not much left. And the next day you go out and do it again. <laughs> and you do it again. That's right. And, and the day is getting ready to do it again. How about Phantom? Phantom was um, an interesting production. Um, I replaced someone who broke their foot because there's a huge staircase when they do their masquerade number and she fell down that staircase. Well, that meant that I then had to be up at the top of that staircase. And was that one of those things that you had minutes or hours to prepare for? She broke her foot no. and suddenly... Uh, yeah, hours. They called you? Right. Hours. Right. They had an audition and they called me and I had to learn the show quickly and a lot of climbing and I'm very afraid of heights so it was one of my least favorite uh, jobs to do. Um, Les Mis, Phantom of the Opera, Sound of Music. Sound of Music, probably one of my favorites. Uh, my The role that I normally play is Mother Abbess, and I, I love singing Climb Every Mountain. I did the national tour with Debbie Boone. I was Sister Margareta, and I was traveling with my son. Was only uh, Well, he actually took his first steps I was in, in love a with Debbie Boone when Detroit I was hotel room. I think. Oh, Debbie's, I Debbie's a doll. Her husband is really, really silly. Um, Rosemary Clooney's son. Uh, but it was, it was a great time because she had a, also little children and nannies, and so we all traveled together. Flights and... Jesus Christ Superstar. Um, David Cassidy was playing Jesus, and... Hold uh, on a second, let, let me yeah. let that sink in for <laughs> a second. David Cassidy. David Cassidy was Jesus. Okay. Yes. I'll keep, I'm thinking so many things, I'm gonna <laughs> keep them all inside, go ahead. And he he's very interesting, um, but, a, but a real pleasure to work with. Yeah. Yeah. David Cassidy's mother was Shirley Jones, who Shirley was Jones. Marion the Librarian in right. The Music Man, in right? Music Man, yes. Interesting how these things all come together. And I've actually worked with his brother, Patrick Cassidy, in a pre-Broadway production of Martin Gare. Hmm. And a wonderful person. Jesus Christ Superstar, to me, represents a real, a real time in my life. I think I was about 15 when Jesus Christ Superstar was all the rage. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was everything. Early mm -hmm. 70s, 71? Right, right. 72, somewhere I did it there. later, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Oliver. Oliver was really fun because, if uh, looking back on it, um, Christian Slater was our Oliver, and he was nine years old at that time. His mother was a casting director, oh. Mary Jo Slater, and so Christian was our little... You know, our little Oliver. And was he doing that whole Jack Nicholson thing <laughs> when, he was, when he was nine? <laughs> I can't remember him doing it then. Channeling uh, Jack Nicholson yeah. <laughs> and, at nine years old, making that face. Um, six women with brain death. I never heard of that one. Um, it was a, a musical review written by a 
believe a group of women from Texas and they were doing it at the it used to be called Steve McGraw's it was a club in New York City on the Upper West Side now it's I believe it's a triad um, and so I filled in for a while in that show and it's really strange as you said from the title six women with brain death or expiring minds want to know hmm. some of the titles here um, we don't really have time to talk about them but I have to say them a chorus line Anything Goes, Beauty and the Beast. One of my personal favorites, Bye Bye Birdie. I love Bye Bye Birdie. Um, I didn't know I was going to love Bye Bye Birdie, but I did. Love I love Bye Bye mm -hmm. Birdie. I really do. Um, Damn Yankees, Fiddler on the Roof, 42nd Street, Grease, Skies and Dolls, High School Musical, Susical, West Side Story, You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, the list goes on and on and on. You've done it all. Uh, yes, I've done most of the things on my list, not everything. Debbie, who are your favorite playwrights? Um, I probably right now, I would say um, Tracy Letts, August Osage County is one of my favorite plays. I took actually a group of 20 students from here to see it on Broadway. That again is another three hour and some minute length uh, play. It was wonderful and it was Felicia Rashad's put in rehearsal for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. it, it was brilliantly done and directed and written, the, the structure of the play itself. They adjusted it at the Arden this past season. Loved it just as much. I was so impressed by uh, a local theater. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it's Philadelphia, mm -hmm. but um, when you've lived in New York for 20 years, everything that's not New York sure. is not New York. Not but New York. Um, it was, it, they do great productions at the Arden. I would they sure do. tell everyone to go. Yeah. It's a shame, isn't it, that when you want to see a play on Broadway, that the cheapest seats are $115. Right. And um, the Arden and the Walnut Street Theater, as you mentioned, great shows, great productions right. for, for half that. Right. The Arden is, is, is so reasonable, as it's, is Walnut Street. It's a phenomenal venue. And Clybourne Park was just at the Arden, and it just opened um, on Broadway, but it, it's, that's also a wonderful play. How about the old timers, the uh, the classics, Tennessee Williams, Eugene Arthur Miller, Eugene O'Neill. Always a favorite of Eugene O'Neill, Long Day's Journey and Tonight. Oh. One of my absolute favorites. Oh, me too. I've been teaching that for a couple of years now. I hadn't read it for about 20 years, and a couple of summers ago I picked it up and read it, and it's, it's just- It's so powerful. Enchanting, heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Arthur Miller. Oh, of course. Of course? Of course, wonderful. I saw Dustin Hoffman. Um, do Death of a Salesman. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I told Phenomenal. you before the show, I saw, um, I can't think of his name right now. Um, Brian Dennehy. Brian Dennehy. But uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman yes. playing Willie, Willie right. Loman just a couple of weeks ago. Right. Tremendous Arthur Miller. Um, we have to take a break. And when we okay. come back, what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about um, the theater okay. department at Cumberland County College, okay. talk about some of the productions in the past that you're most proud of, and okay. we'll talk a little bit about the future as well. Okay. Great. Good. Give us a minute, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Larry Kane of the Cumberland Mall. All the best to everybody at Cumberland County Community College. Your success begins there. Thanks for staying with us for the second half of Insights. Our guest today is Debbie Bradshaw, the Director of Theater at Cumberland County College. And Debbie, before we get into your life at the college and yes. the life of theater at the college, I had a couple of questions for you, again, about your acting career, some things I'm wondering about. Tell me about a magic moment, all those years you were on the stage. Tell me some magic moment you didn't expect to happen, something that changed the way you look at your, your life, your career. I think one of the highlights would be um, at Radio City Music Hall in the Christmas Spectacular and they were looking for someone to play Mrs. Claus, a uh, big band singer, so, and that was me. And um, I had six songs in the show. Really? And the big secret is I'm the only person who sang live in that production. Really? So a lot of responsibility that way, but beautiful gowns and 
my backup dancers were the Rockettes. The Rockettes. So it was a, it was a great a great moment, and I I loved every minute of every performance there. And you would do five performances a day, on some days. Weren't Regis and Kat, what's her name, Kathy? Kathy Lee. Weren't they Kathy involved Lee. in this somehow? Can you they tell me were. That? Um, they, you know, obviously were having their talk show then, and they invited us. They came to see the show and invited us to come to do their Christmas Eve special. So I actually co-hosted it. Ooh. Yes, yes, with all the cue cards and the trimmings and and sang. Cue cards? That's <laughs> not <laughs> all ad lived. <laughs> I thought, there I thought, are lots of cue cards. I and thought everything Gilman. I saw on television was real. I, I thought know. those people were just saying things that came into their minds. Only here, Kevin. Mm. <laughs> How about something horrible? Cell phones going off in the middle of the glass menagerie. Laura and her gentleman <laughs> caller. Laura's down on one knee, and a uh, well, cell phone in the, in the audience goes happen. off. Things happen. Things um, happen. People have had heart attacks in the audience. Mm -hmm. um, things happen. Um, I was on stage at the Kennedy Center, and there was a leak from the ceiling and I had just, uh, it was, this was in Les Miserables and I had fallen backwards over a box in slow motion so I was hanging upside down like a bat and all of a sudden I felt this, Deborah, leave the stage. And I, of course, didn't know what to do. I was even afraid to open my eyes because you're just not allowed to do that in Les Mis. But mm. So that was a, a pretty crazy moment. You told me that actors have sort of a secret uh, language. You, you told me you forgot your lines one time and you looked at your fellow actor and said something like, I, I have no clue what I'm supposed to say. If you're one of my students watching this, that never happened. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I I absolutely went up on my lines and I went to my partner that I was singing to and I just said, not a clue. Not a clue. Don't know what's happening. Uh -huh. And so we just had this embrace and emoted until and the embrace. it came back in musically and I caught up with myself. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it was a very long yes. embrace. <laughs> um, what made you want to teach? All those years on the road, all those, all those roles, and right. you told me you were, uh, I, don't, I don't want to say how old you were, but you were, you, you weren't a kid when you decided I, to teach. I wasn't a kid. How did I do that? That was perfect. Thank you. Um, <laughs> my son was in middle school. We lived in Glen Ridge. We had moved outside of Manhattan so he could go to school and leave private school. And I directed the high school production of Our Town. And I realized what a great rapport I had with my students, and I loved directing. I just, I loved doing it. And I thought, I'm not half bad at this. So I went to NYU and, and met with who the man who ended up being my mentor, Lowell, Dr. Lowell Swartzell, who's passed away now. Um, and I said, am I gonna be the oldest person at NYU? And mm -hmm. he said, absolutely, you're in the middle. Mm -hmm. And that was the truth. That's the, the beauty of, of that university. So, I, and I loved every minute of grad school. You've taught all over. You've taught in London. Mm -hmm. You've taught in, where else? Cork, Ireland. In Cork. Cork, Ireland, yes. And you, now you're in Vineland, uh, New Jersey. Now I'm in Vineland, New Jersey, teaching college. Um, the Cumberland County College Theater Department. As I said at the beginning of the show, there are a lot of people who are very well aware of it, and I think it's becoming more and more prominent every day as it should be, and there are many people who aren't aware of it. It's tremendous. You guys have put on some incredible shows in the past couple of years, incredible shows. Thank you. Um, let's talk about the past few years. What mm -hmm. are some of the productions that uh, you've been in charge of that you're the most proud of? Um, well, basically my job is I produce all the shows. So anything that happens, that's up to me. Um, I also am artistic director, so I select everything that happens. And I have to do that based on, you know, what I, what I really am passionate about working on, I think is one of the most important things. Um, and, and then also, what the demographic is, mm -hmm. you know, what kind of students we might have available because first and foremost we want to try to give the students an opportunity and bring in the community sure. so it's a bigger um, actor base. Entertain and inform. 
Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess some of the, obviously, the Fiddler that we just did. Um, In the spring was of 2012. Very special production. Um, I loved it. I met my husband in West Palm Beach, Florida, performing at Musicana Supper Club, and we were cast singing Now I Have Everything, and that's a song from Fiddler. We actually have it engraved in our wedding rings. So it was a very special moment. That's the most romantic thing it, I've ever heard. It was lovely. It is, really, too. Thank you. It was, it was, it was really lovely, and um, so I, I'm very proud of Fiddler. I, I think... How about my side story? Um, that was very exciting for us because we did the Broadway choreography and we also did that for a chorus line and it was very we knew it was going to be a challenge but everyone just worked so hard the students and we had a huge cast and it was a very emotional journey on that show it was wonderful uh, it has to be a huge cast you have the jets and the sharks and, the sharks. and all the mm -hmm. all the main characters right I've seen you in action. I've seen you, um, <laughs> you know, in the midst of a practice. I've stuck my head into the theater, and uh, you're almost, well, not almost, you are. You're that proverbial director. I, you're standing there, and you're moving all the time, and you're waving your hands, and, you know, I see you constantly right. in motion. You're completely involved in the whole production, aren't you? I am. I am from start to finish. I am. And um, I try to, one of the things I do well is cheerlead those students mm -hmm. and when they believe that they can do it mm -hmm. then they they can do so many wonderful wonderful things that maybe they didn't know for instance um 42nd street we started i wanted to do it because i love tap i've tapped my entire life and we started a, se a tap class mm -hmm. in september mm -hmm. so that we would be ready in april and we had a full tap class. It Eight was months. not right. And it wasn't a guarantee you'll be in the show. Mm -hmm. It was a you'll audition mm -hmm. and if you're ready, you'll be in the show. Forty mm -hmm. uh, second street dancers. West Side Story. Mm -hmm. Fiddler. What else? Um, rumors. I loved rumors. I loved I loved Neil Simon. And this was um, a farce and it was just the the timing, the pace was everything just just done right. Uh, mm -hmm. the odd couple, same same, uh, the pace, I'm really, really proud of that because mm -hmm. our students were chosen from the Kennedy Center American College Theater Festival. Congratulations. Thank you to perform there. Mm -hmm. um, I also received uh, an Excellence in Direction Award from the Kennedy Center mm -hmm. and we had a great experience Debbie, also Debbie, you're a game traveling. changer. <laughs> you have brought big life to this campus. Well, you. You've done amazing things. Um, we only have a couple of minutes. I, I, I'm wondering, some individual students, um, I teach drama, I teach literature, I know we kind of overlap, right. I, we, we have a lot of the same students. Some of the students that uh, you know you think might go real far, and I know you're probably hesitant to even mention names because you don't want to leave anybody out, Right. but um, <laughs> we have a guy named Matt Giacomelli. Who's at the Disney College program this semester. Is he? done really, really well. He's come from, he's just leaps and bounds he grew so much being here and he was a really important part of our program for a long time quite a guy yep Bianca Rivera just got a Bianca owns, yeah. <laughs> owns my heart Bianca Rivera well she is I, I call her my baby she is really a darling and she just got a scholarship for University of the Arts so she'll be continuing her um, BFA in musical theater Good for there her. Um, Bobby Diana? Gauss. Who? Bobby Gauss. Bobby Gauss. I don't know. Went on to do a national tour in the Mood Live, and he's uh, in New York and choreographing and doing really well. One of my favorite people in the world, Diana Hoffman. She, I had her in class years ago. Um, I believe she's teaching English at Bridgeton High School. At Bridge in Bridgeton um, in, the, in the school system. She, right. She and has a fifth grade class. That's right. We actually had her entire fifth grade come to the theater and we did a three-hour workshop of theater games mm -hmm. and for all those 12 year olds and didn't Diana fly she she was from a Sarah in Fiddler on the Roof and she flew. she flew she's fearless it was wonderful she's great yep she is great okay Kevin Colva Kevin Colva mm -hmm. well everyone loves Kevin Colva um, when we, f I guess our first show was 42nd Street, mm -hmm. and he came down the hall and started singing to me. Mm -hmm. Didn't really know him that well, and that was it. From then on, 
you know, every show has to have Kevin. He's, he reminds he's, me of Orson Welles. He has, he's so talented. He's very talented. He can be the Orson Welles of Citizen Kane. He can be the Orson Welles of The Third Man. He's just, Kevin is so incredibly talented. Everything he's, that he does, he's... He commits to 100%. And one of my favorite things about Kevin is that, you know, we all have these crazy lives outside of here. And we come here sometimes <clears throat> as our respite. Kevin walks in the theater every single performance, every single rehearsal with a smile on his face, and he's just ready to have a good time sure. and do what we really love to do. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I'm not sure how many people know this, we're talking about packed houses. We're talking about sellouts for not just many, but most of your plays. The theater here at the college is a tremendous theater. It's been open for, what, 15 years now, right. I guess, since the mid-90s. Mm -hmm. um, tremendous theater holds, I think, 550 people. Mm -hmm. and your productions fill the place. You have standing room only. Uh, what's in store for the future? What's what's coming up over the next next year or two? Um, well, uh, the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee is the summer production. Mm -hmm. So uh, Kevin is also part of that, and Diana that we mentioned, and Bianca as well. Uh, there are a small cast of 12. That's great. And then in the fall, we'll be doing uh, Noises Off, really? a three-act Farce, comedy, mm -hmm. fun, action-packed. It, it's a lot of laughs. It's a very, very funny show. And you told me that you're undecided about the spring. I am undecided. What happens in your mind? How, what's going to make you decide what to do for the spring? Um, I wish I had the answer to that. And sometimes it just hits me and I know exactly what it is. I have a list, a short list of things that I... You could do I, Bye Bye Birdie. You could give <laughs> Ann Margaret a call, see what she's up to. <laughs> you know, when we we did Bye Bye Birdie a few summers ago, and it was, we I think we had 50 people in the show, yeah. and it was just so much fun. Stephen Kalakos mm -hmm. um, played Conrad Birdie, mm -hmm. and it, it was just wonderful. One of my all-time favorites. Uh, Debbie, we're out of time. It's really been great having you here. Thank you. We have uh, degrees at the college. Uh, students can come here and major in theater education. Right. They can take a performance track and take more classes in acting. Uh, but anyone at all who's interested in the Cumberland County College Theater Department should contact Ms. Deborah Bradshaw at the college. Call the college's main number, check out our website. Uh, Debbie, thank you very much for being here, and I wish you the best, the best of success. Thank you, Kevin. It was a pleasure. Thank you.